of money towards the end of like I guess my YouTube career at the time and like I like invested it and I you know use it to pay for my car insurance my car payment and my yeah. apartment and my tuition like everything like that money is like you know benefiting me in that sense but like I'm not blowing it away like I actually talked to someone that like did YouTube around the same time as me and she was like dude so like do you still have money from YouTube and I'm like considering I'm like paying for things with it kind of and like but I invested a lot of it and she's like yeah. so well, I ran out of money That's and I was like so what what are you doing now like yeah finding a job I guess but like it's a hard world and you got to be smart with it. And that's the thing. These young kids are like, they don't know. They're not smart with their money. Luckily my mom's like an accountant. My dad's good with money too. Like they, yeah. they, you know, kind of guided me on what to do. But a lot of people like you get famous at 14, these like TikTokers, these YouTubers, these like random internet celebrities yeah. for doing like silly things. Like, I guess that's how everyone starts out, but blowing it on a brand new car and this and that and like all this stuff like they're never going to understand because they're right. so young and they, they never think it's going to run out that that's the mm. biggest thing you can spend money if it's continuously coming in but like you said your mom's an accountant and your dad is you know you know not the creative space but still one of those things you know where it's like you know if he has a bad stretch of races or you know he gets hurt or you know whatever could you know a million things could happen just like you you know you say you know you could say one wrong thing and all of a sudden you lose a bunch of subscribers you get demonetized or whatever it could be cut off just like that yep you know it's it's really that crazy and I'm sure that's something you know obviously your dad understands you know being being a drag racer and um you know not everyone's able to get get through with that stuff and I think about younger people too like did you ever face like in school, like did people know, know who you were, like what you did, like when you were younger, like would you ever take any crap or did people ever bully you, you know, for being like, like popular on YouTube or whatever? Yeah. So, well, when I first started, I was at like my, it was like before eighth grade and I went to the same school preschool to eighth grade. So like all those people like were pretty cool about it. Like I had yeah. a very small class size, like, you know, we were all close. And when I went to high school, I didn't go to high school with like any of my friends from growing up. So it was kind of like meeting new people. And of course I came into a new, like a public high school. I came from private school too. Yeah. And I come to this big school with a blue check mark. And at that time, I'm pretty sure I had close to 400,000 uh, Instagram followers. I've wow. lost obviously a lot since then. Because you said damn. And now you I are said, canceled. damn. And you know, people don't agree with like, I don't know. I didn't want to make my Instagram a brand. Like I want to show yeah. my life like everyone yeah. else. Yeah. So yeah. I came into school and at first it was kind of like, oh my gosh, like we want to be her friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe not the best intentions. Um, a lot of people, of course, like, and it still happens to this day. Like, oh, like Jenna, like let's hang out so you can like repost me and like, I'll get clout and God. whatever else. I'm like, it's, and it's hard for me to see through the fake too. Cause like genuinely I see the best in everyone. And until yeah. someone does something wrong to me or someone I'm close with, like, I'm going to think they're the most amazing person. I won't listen to you. If you're like, Jenna, they like are a really bad person. Like you shouldn't be their friend. I'm like, well, they're nice to me. Well, yeah, yeah, Jenna, they're nice to you for the wrong reasons. And I mean, in high school, that was kind of the peak of my YouTube thing. And like my teachers were really accommodating when I'd have to like miss a week to, you know, go. Oh, post that's nice. Yeah. I would go host a meet and greet in Orlando. Like, what are they going to tell me to do? They're going to fail me. Like, no, they're not going to. And, you know, kids would get really mad that like I was getting some cool experiences and they thought it like, yeah, the videos were cringy. I'm like not proud of them, but you know, they pay the bills. You and should be. Do whatever like, they're yeah, fun like I was a kid granted like yeah, some, my I was God. a teenager like I was legally able to drive at that point like yeah I know they were embarrassing I was paid money to act yeah. like I was 12 when I was almost 18 like I know and they would say mean things and there was this one time I snapped and I was like how much do your parents make like tell me because I'm pretty sure I make more than them and it was awful of me because I I hate talking about it and I like hate being cocky about right, it. But it like, can get to that point. Like if a teacher gave you shit, it's like, I'm about to go make double your salary in Orlando this weekend. Yeah. So 
if you, if you want to give me zero on this homework assignment, you go ahead and fucking do that. Yeah. Like, but, okay. Like if you teach at a public school, all of your income is um, it's public record. I can look it up. Yeah. Oh, so, like if it, honestly, all my teachers are like super awesome. I still that, have to get yeah. with some. So, but yeah, it was, it was the, I got bullied quite a bit growing up and I was yeah. like, well, let's talk in 10 years. Let's talk yeah. in 10 years. Yeah. The, the bullying th- is so crazy, or the money thing is so crazy. You know, luckily it sounds like you've had a much better experience, but like, I'm pretty sure it was another Rogan episode. It was like Demi Lovato and like, she's still younger, right? I don't think she was 18 at the time. And, you know, she was getting into it with her mom and it became kind of awkward because she kind of snapped and rightfully so just because she was like paying for everything at the time. Like how weird would that be? You're trying to be parented, but you're the one that's paying all the bills. Like that's just such a, I mean, I was driving when I was listening to that. I I swear I I like had to like pull over for a second just be like, just take a second to be like, oh my God, what an insane dynamic that must be for some people that are so young, they're out there and then successful financially. That that's just so, I mean, do you, did you ever have like, other than that one time, you know, you snapped or whatever, because people were poking Mm -hmm. the bear, but like, I mean, did you ever have any other like troubles with any of that stuff or times maybe you did want to splurge or whatever, or did you ever, you know, kind of be like, oh man, like just to prove a point, like I really just want to go do this or, or buy this or something like that. I mean, I feel like yes and no. Like at like again, like I was kind of in that sense of like I was young and like didn't really understand how money worked. And like I had it accessible to me. It was on my card. I could go do whatever I want. And my mom yeah. was like, Jenna, you need a belt. Your pants don't fit. She like thought I was like gonna go to Target or something. No, I went to Louis Vuitton and I bought a belt that was too big for me and I didn't care and I got holes punched in it and I did that. And any minor inconvenience, I was like, you know what would make me feel better? Like a new purse. Oh, I knew this. Yeah. Like I was a little reckless for a couple months, but it's stuff that I guess I still use yeah. all the time. Like it wasn't anything like I didn't do anything crazy. I mean, yeah. I always like nice cars and yeah. I mean, I pay for my leases that I've had. I've had like three cars since I turned 16, but it's like, I pay for them out of my pocket. Like I know what comes with it. Like I'm not riding around in a Corvette or anything, but it's yeah. like, I like, I like a car that's functional and sexy. There you go. So and if I that's guess, what like, you want to do, do it. Exactly. Otherwise, like who's so going to get mad though. that I'm like driving a cute car? Like, oh, well, I mean, I did get bullied for that in high school. It was like a jealousy thing. And it was like, oh, daddy's money. I'm yeah. like, honey, oh. my dad's unemployed right now. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, actually, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's so baller, though, that your mom thinks you're going to Target. You go straight to Louis. That's actually that's awesome. That's pretty it was cool. so bad. And like my problem was I didn't look at how much it was. I didn't care. I was like, you were, this just, a ball, you were just balling like that. You're like I rapper didn't... status. Maybe right well, there. definitely not rapper status, but it was like, okay, like how much could it really be? You know, like it's a belt. Like it's a, well, it was my fault. I chose a men's reversible Louis Vuitton. So, you know, it add, it added, it added a little bit, but then I came back like the nice little attendant who knew me by name at Louis Vuitton Beverly Hills. Oh my God. Came back with like the little, like receipt and she was like just sign here and I my friend literally has a picture of me and I'm like this like signing it because I didn't know how much it was oh, oh my well. god I still I literally wear it like every weekend it's That's it's bad a long way. next time I see you if I see if I'm gonna be looking for your belt I'd be like nice belt I can't please wait. do please you're gonna do have, you're gonna have that moment that's gonna be great okay <laughs> let's move into TikTok now because that's like the new thing TikTok is kind of forced everyone to adjust. We see Instagram with reels now. We see YouTube shorts are really being pushed more and more. So now that you're on, uh, you know, you built a, a really good following on TikTok. Can you kind of talk about like TikTok versus YouTube? Obviously you haven't uploaded. I think I wrote it down. Like oh, wow. the last video I saw was like October 7th of 2020 on YouTube was the last video that you've done. You obviously are much more active on TikTok. It's more short form content versus YouTube where it's more long, you know, kind of mid to, to long form. What are kind of the, the, the differences? You know, what do you like more about TikTok? Is it just easier to do? You know, you can do all the editing and all the features with, within the app. Like, what all do you like about 
TikTok and, you know, are you really going to, you know, continue to try to, to build that and hope to stay active? So once more of that funding does come on, that can be more of a, you know, a bigger revenue stream for you. Yeah. So I definitely have a shorter attention span as time has gone on. And I think that is we all do. like, like Vine, like that was such a big thing when we were kids and like, yes. it was what, six seconds. Yep. So I feel like as the years have gone on, like I can't sit here and like watch a full movie. Like it's like TikTok. Like I, I literally will stop the movie and go on my phone because it's, I can get a laugh out of something. I can learn a fun fact, like yep. be entertained in like less than three minutes. Yep. And that's like the thing with YouTube. Like when I sit down to try and film a YouTube video, I'm talking about so many things. Like I tried to edit a video and it was like an hour long. And I was like, this isn't a podcast. This is supposed to be me doing my makeup kind of thing, yeah. you know? And that's like, you have to film an SD card and you put it in your computer and you yep. edit and you do this. Like TikTok, you, you do it all right there. It's yep. easy. You come up with an idea like, oh, I can literally do this right now. I yeah. don't have to, you know, wait for the camera to charge and things like that. So I right. think definitely the accessibility of TikTok is like super, like, I think what kind of makes it so good, I yeah. guess that's like a bad word to use. I, I don't know. I couldn't think of anything better than that, but I don't know. And like TikTok, the algorithm is so much better. Like yeah. you start liking sports videos, like you're going to get sports videos, yes. but you watch one YouTube video of a pimple pop. And next thing you know, you're like, what you should watch on YouTube is like 18 pimple videos. I'm like, I didn't actually yeah. want to watch all of those. Like, right. I don't know. I think the algorithm on TikTok is a lot better. And at least for like creators starting out, I think it's a lot easier to get a start on TikTok. For sure. I mean, the organic reach is so much greater. And, you know, YouTube, even YouTube shorts, I've noticed. And there's a guy that I follow uh, that makes YouTube videos. He used to work for Gary Vee and talks about the algorithm and all that stuff, you know, YouTube, whether it's shorts or not, you know, if you don't have a big following, it really is kind of a slow, like if you're going to have a viral video, I had a short that did really, really well. Mm -hmm. And in the first 24 hours, you know, in the first like 48 hours, you know, when you're looking at your analytics, I'm like, well, this video is a dud, but then, you know, it was like a delayed reaction. And that, that's just kind of how YouTube is on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been times where I post a video like before I go to bed and I wake up and I'm like, oh my God. And that's just, that's you playing the drums. No, someone just tried to call me and my laptop wasn't on do not disturb. <laughs> You're good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's just way, way different. Um, now has your view changed? Obviously you've had great success as we talked about all the finances between, uh, you know, YouTube and TikTok and things like that. Do you still, do you also like, how much has it changed for you? Do you still look at it as fun and an experience and creating memories and things like that? Or is it really shifted? Like, is your mindset always like, this is like business or this is what's going to be good for the algorithm or views or, you know, this is a better hook rather than this is just kind of what I want to do. Like, how do you continue to balance that as a creator? So definitely, I think I've like moved to TikTok because it is so like easy and I don't feel forced Yeah. because it's so fast. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is a funny sound. I'm being creative. Like this would be such a funny like video Yeah. that it's so easy to do. Where like YouTube, like the whole just setup and the whole time it takes to do everything. Like that's what makes it feel like such a chore. Yeah. And that's kind of why, like, I've never been able to get back into YouTube. Like I tried to go back. And I think that one video that I posted in 2020, like I was like, ha 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 gonna come back to YouTube so I can have an income again and everyone took it really seriously like come on like yeah. I was also trying to just like get back in the game and like see what yeah. would happen and like change my niche and everything yeah but like YouTube is something that I view as a full-time job where like TikTok yeah. is like a hobby yeah well I, and more so it feels like everyone's kind of on the same level with TikTok obviously creativity people can do whatever but predominantly everyone's filming with their phones and you see yeah. YouTube now, some people, it's just like, who shot this? Scorsese? Like, this is insane. You know, some YouTube videos, the production quality and the crews, I mean, some of these huge, I mean, I saw a little bit of it when I was with Daily Dropout, you know, that was a full-on company, a full-on operation. And I saw, you know, what all went into it and the amount of time it just took to, to edit a stupid drunk interview that I did in Mexico. 
like a lot goes into it and you know it's just like you know, we got to be sharp with the sound here and make sure it all blends. And when we're, when we're cutting back and forth, like this has to flow, this has to sound good. I mean, like you said, I mean, a lot goes into it from your camera, SD card, upload, put it in Final Cut or whatever you use and, and chop it all up and make it look good. And then you're just like, all right, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. It's um, YouTube is a grind. It really is. Yeah, it's it's it was a full time job for seven years for me. I mean, I guess the first few was like super fun. I was like a kid. But as time went on, like it started to be more of a brand and there was rules yep. and things you had to follow. And it was like these kind of contracts are things like you see when you are employed. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's ugh, I try so hard. I like get in these little like moments where it's like, Oh my gosh, I should film a video. Oh wait, my camera's dead. Yeah. And then two hours later, I'm like, never mind. Yeah. So going forward here, you know, you're so like, what does your like dream job, dream life look like? Like, are you doing your own thing? Are you working for someone? Are you in front of the camera, behind the camera, a little bit of both? Like, what exactly are you doing? Like you just talked about you, you know, you had an interview here recently. Like, what sort of job was like? was like that, like what avenue are you, you trying to go down professionally post-college and, and beyond? So the job was at, would have been a great stepping stone for like dream life. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts a little bit. Oh man. But my dream has always been since probably I started college to do some sort of like media in a sense for a big sports team. Cool. And I... I don't know, like I've been like a journalism major, my minor's digital marketing, like I know how to do analytics, I am learning more how to market every day, yep. and I obviously have social media under my belt, I like want to do like digital marketing and social media strategies for like an MLB team, Cool. and cool. that's that's what the interview was for, so R RIP to that, five interviews later, it's fine, <laughs> I won't be mad, um, but I guess like that's always been my dream. But after I, you know, interned in Savannah last summer, I realized how demanding the sports world is. Yes. And I mean, that was on a summer ball scale. That was three months of my year. That's not eight or nine. And as much as I like want to sit here and be like, one day I will work in sports. Like I'm going to be so cool. I feel like it might be a better route to go down like, a different path like I was recently brainstorming how cool it would be to work in the same department but for like a beauty and like makeup yeah company. because that doesn't require you to travel almost every single day right and then you're not dealing with I mean when the off season comes it's just like you can't just stop tweeting you can't yeah. just stop putting pictures out I mean it's just like you lose a whole bunch of content when the off season comes, you can no longer comment on that crazy thing that happened in the second inning during, you know, Wednesday's game. Yeah. It's, it, there's nothing, you know, it's just like, you know, you're dealing with baseball. I grew up in, like I said, Ohio cold market. Like what, like, how do we get people that are dealing with seasonal depression? You know, the sun goes down at four 30 and it's, there's so much snow outside. Like what us as the Cleveland Indians, like what the hell do we do? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, I was a sports business major kind of found my way into the, the media side of things. So I understand the whole sports thing. I, I worked for some sports teams, love the jobs, love the internships, but I knew that I'm like, okay, I like this, but this isn't, but once this internship's over, no, like that, yeah. that that's not, that's not what I want to do. I worked with the Cardinals and I worked with the A's when they came here for spring training. Awesome. So glad that I've got to work for the NFL. So glad that I worked spring training, the different, more relaxed, different environment, kind of like summer ball. It's shorter. It's more about the fans, less about the product on the field. It's kind of the ramp up for the season. Um, love, really enjoyed it. But once I started doing interviews and media stuff, I'm like, okay, I actually love this. I, I don't mind whatever I got to do, you know, 
kill me, throw me off a bridge or whatever, like wh- whatever, whatever I got to do to grind away and get better at this. Let's do we'll it. do it. Yeah. And- I think it's the whole thing of like inter- internships and like all these like smaller experiences are like so important because I could never see myself working a job where I don't love it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to have to be in a career where it's like, I dread waking up and doing it in the morning. Like I want to wake up with a smile on my face and be like, let's get it. You know? Yes. hundred percent. And of course it's not going to be like that every day, but you want something that, I mean, for some people it is and good for them. That's awesome. But you find something that when it's like that, the majority of the time, cause I'm with you. And I think that's, you know, where our, our excuse me, our generation kind of gets shit on a little bit. You know, a lot of us have, Jesus. <laughs> Someone get, you get allergies. Some water. Do you get allergies? A little bit. Oh, I've been getting murdered. No, it's not good. You gotta go take some like Claritin or something. Let's get you look a Claritin me. brand deal. I need a Claritin brand deal. I'm dying over here. I look like I'm on hot ones right now. <laughs> Oh my God, long pipe. Everyone's going to be like, Jenna on with this stoner weirdo canceler again. Oh um, my goodness. But yes, that's a good, that's a cool thing about our generation because I fight for that too. I'm like, listen, I'm realistic, but I don't mind, you know, doing something on the side or in place until I can really do this media thing full time, you know, something that's going to pay the bills, but also gives me the freedom and flexibility to be able to, to work towards this other thing. And slowly but surely it's, it's getting better. So that that's nice. But yeah, that's, um, it, it's good to see like other people like think that same way and fight for that stuff too. Cause not everyone does. It's, it's really easy to be like, all right, this is just kind of what I'm supposed to do. This is the safer thing. And I'm just going to do that. Yeah. I just want to find something that like I fall in love with. Like I want to fall in love with a career. I love That's it. That's my goal. I mean, my goal was to fall in love with a person. We've got, we've checked that off the list now. <laughs> and now I'm like, so what am I supposed to do with my life from here on out? Like I need a job. And so. is he play? where's he at? Virginia Tech? Yeah. So he's a grad student at Virginia Tech right now. I actually, he was, <laughs> he was a player for the Bananas. I figured, and I mean, it was, it was, uh, in very fine print in my contract, no inappropriate fraternization between players, whatever. I'm like, but my boss like told me to go hang out with the players and like people like make friends. So, right. but I kept it a secret. I've never kept such a big secret. So that was fun. It was yeah. like, um, I don't know. It made it feel like exciting i feel like i was in a movie like oh no one can know romance and baseball they go i mean come on they go hand in hand they all either the... go hand in hand or they do not go at all that's exactly right exactly right well, that's awesome i i can't wait i i hope my brother plays somewhere again this year or selfishly i hope he just he plays a lot this season has a good season he's just able to train and i kind of want him to come visit me out here and hang out for a week or so right. so back and forth but i'm also like it'd be fun to go somewhere to one of these small towns and and hang out it's the best baseball it's not so baseball is your sport that's your thing yeah yeah I love baseball I went to the ASU game last night and I was like why aren't we as good this year guys it's sting we should be baseball and golf we should be our history is we're awesome mm-hmm. but baseball hasn't been worth anything in a long time it's a problem we should be awesome we should be awesome and like I'm such a baseball girl and I've gotten way too into it and it but now on like the media side like I go sit out a game and I can't even pay attention because yeah. one I'm looking at all the advertisements all over the field yes thank you to my professor of sports marketing campaigns for that one yeah and the other one is they put their like all their statistics and their batting average and everything on the screen. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, why, why are you playing someone, this person? <laughs> like you're just making a joke of yourself at this point. Like, yeah. I don't know, find someone new to play on your team. That's so I know it fun. doesn't work like that, but after my first job in sports, <laughs> I came back home, went to a Cavs game over Christmas break, 
And I'm like, just thinking, man, they do their 50 50 raffle so inefficiently. Like that's, I'm just like walking around the concourse. I'm like, this is a disgusting display for the 50 50. What yeah. are they thinking? <laughs> because like at the Cardinals, they took it very seriously. I'm pretty sure in terms of the peep, like just the buy-in, like the, the pot, right? The jackpot for the 50, 50, I'm pretty sure consistently was like the biggest in the NFL. Like they were really like 50, 50 is our thing. We're going to make it our thing. That's going to be like our brand within the, you know, whole marketing promotions department. So they got after it and it was, um, really cool to to see firsthand but yeah I, I've gotten poisoned by that too and I'm glad I've never worked for like one of my favorite teams so it, it doesn't ruin like going to the arena or the stadium for me you know what I mean yeah I could see that happening it it's a possibility when I did YouTube and we went to Disney like we flew out to Disney World and they showed us behind the scenes yeah and it kind of ruined Disney World for oh. me I think about content too sometimes. Sometimes I get in that thing like, you know, like when I'm out meeting people, you know, you get introduced to people or whatever. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, maybe we should save this conversation to the podcast. And then I, then I have to like stab my head. I'm like, no, you idiot. Just like be in the moment for once and like and, and enjoy a real conversation with someone or, you know, oh God, I'm getting hit again. <coughs> I'm dying. But, uh, but yeah, it can ruin stuff where I think about like, I like going out and playing golf mm -hmm. really should. There's some really funny, like trending sounds on TikTok and like Instagram for golf. I'm like, I should like get some content. And then I'm just like, no, I just kind of want to enjoy myself. It's, That's uh, my thing. I've wanted to enjoy myself for too many years. now. Yeah. And you're burnt out. Yep. And now you're taking this gap and you'll be, you'll be back. We'll see. Yeah, it's like when people take like a gap year of college, I've just taken a, a long few gap years of social media. I love it. I love it. Well, Jenna, I thank you so much for taking the time. I, I can't believe that you were any sort of nervous for this. You were, you're a natural podcast guest. I just didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if you were going to hit me with like some crazy, like memory of like something that happened I was going to be like Joe I just don't remember that and I no. you know I didn't know it's going to happen like we go to ASU there's there's so many stories that could have been brought up that I was nervous for the um the possibility but I never really ran into you other than like devils I I admit like I I met you when I was out when I've been graduating that's true that, so, well, that's true I don't know yeah. You know what? I don't know. I was nervous for nothing. Nervous for nothing. Nervous for nothing. Well, I thank you so much for doing this. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure once again to subscribe, hit that bell, never miss an episode. And we will talk to you next Monday. Mm -hmm.